It's finally here, the iPhone everybody really cares about, the iPhone 10. This is the first major redesign to the iPhone since the iPhone 6, and with over a thousand dollar price tag, there better be some cool tech inside for us to look into, which is why we're gonna tear it down. Check out these penelopes. Those are some long screws. Ever wonder how repair shops open your iPhone? Meet the adhesive press. This press heats devices evenly to a specific temperature that won't damage the display, but will soften the adhesive. It also uses pressure and heat to give a just like new seal quickly when resealing devices. But of course, you can always just use your eye opener to do the same job if you're doing it yourself. Even though it lacks a home button, the iPhone X opens pretty much the same as the iPhone 8. Just need a little heat to soften the adhesive and a nice slack to separate and cut away the remaining adhesive. Not only has the iPhone X been completely redesigned on the outside, check out the new interior. The logic board is way smaller, the battery is a completely different shape, and it now just has one big bracket covering the display connectors. It does still have those annoying tri-point screws. Apple has neatly arranged all the connectors in a row like a highway of board connectors. It's incredibly elegant and very space efficient. The degree of consolidation for functionality here is unprecedented. The Apple Watch is the only other device that we've seen that's come this close. All this miniaturization was necessary to free up volume for a larger battery. With the display separated, we're interestingly left with the front-facing camera still attached to the board side of the phone. Previously, the front-facing camera was integrated into the display assembly. The display is a 5.8-inch all-screen OLED display Apple calls it Super Retina HD, 2436 by 1125 resolution at 458 PPI. There's a beefy bracket and some foam adhesive holding the rear cameras in place. These cameras must really need to stay put to work their magic in features like portrait mode. These are two 12 megapixel cameras, one wide angle and one telephoto, and they both rock optical image stabilization. Next out is the tiny logic board. This board is incredibly space efficient with a footprint of about 70% of the one in the iPhone 8 Plus. How did Apple put even more more tech into that tiny of a board? By folding it in half, of course. The two halves are soldered together, so we got some help from our hosts at CircuitWise and their super legit hot air rework station to separate the layers. The iPhone X logic board is the first double layer board we've seen in an iPhone since the very first one. On the boards, you can see the 64-bit A11 Bionic system on chip, and on the outside of the logic board sandwich, you can see the 64 gigabytes of Toshiba-made flash memory. For the first time in iPhone design history, Apple packed in a two-cell battery that has four adhesive pull tabs, but the pull tabs are adhered to the sides of the cells rather than folded over the top, making the procedure to remove them a little trickier than usual. This is a 3.81 volt, 10.35 watt hour battery that Apple says will last two hours longer than the iPhone 7s. The sensor housing comes out Next, which is home to the True Depth camera system, which contains a flood illuminator, an IR dot projector, an infrared camera, and a 7 megapixel front facing camera. If you want to learn more about Face ID, check out our recent video where we explain how all of those components work together. We're left with just a few more parts in this phone. The speaker, Taptic engine, and lightning connector all come out, leaving us with the Qi wireless charging coil. With our phone completely disassembled, it's time to talk repairability. The iPhone X scored a 6 out of 10. And here's why. On the upside, display and battery repairs remain a priority in the iPhone's design. A cracked display can be replaced without removing biometric Face ID hardware. Liberal use of screws is preferable to glue, but you'll have to bring your Apple-specific drivers, Penelope and TriPoint in addition to a standard Phillips. Waterproofing measures complicate some repairs but make difficult water damage repairs less likely. But on the downside, fussy cables tie unrelated components together into complex assemblies, and glass on the front and back doubles the likelihood of drop damage. And if the back glass breaks, you'll be removing every component and replacing the entire chassis. That's all for this teardown. Comment below with your thoughts on the iPhone 10 and hit that subscribe button so you have all the latest repair videos in your back pocket for your next fix. I'll see you next time.